In this video, we'll examine Ukraine's other bullpup, the Fort 221, the Ukrainian Tavor. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at the Ukrainian designed and produced IPI Vulcan, a bullpup based on the AK platform. And the Vulcan and Fort 221 have sometimes been confused in some media. The Fort 22 series Tavors, of course, originate from IWI in Israel. Introduced in the early 2000s, the Tavor has been purchased and seen service with militaries around the world. Ukraine's Tavors were offered by RPC Fort, or State Research and Production Association Fort, of the Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs. The company was originally established in 1991, initially as a regional organisation, and in 1998 it became a state enterprise. Located in Vinitsia in western Ukraine, the company initially focused on a line of pistols, pump-action shotguns and AKM variants. From a survey of Fort's website, we know that IWI weapons first began to appear on the company's product lists in late 2008, following an agreement to potentially license manufacture IWI products in Ukraine. This included pistols, submachine guns, rifles and the Negev light machine gun. In 2011-12, media reports suggested that the Devor was being produced in Ukraine, and the guns appeared at a number of trade shows with RPC Fort markings, including a company crest on the moulded stock. There is, however, some doubt about whether the weapons were actually manufactured in Ukraine, merely assembled there, or if they were produced in Israel with some Fort markings and shipped to Ukraine. The nature of the partnership is undisclosed, but it has been suggested that if Fort gained substantial sales of the weapons, then further manufacture may have been transferred to Ukraine. In 2014, it was reported that Colonel Vatily Otomaniak, the head of the Artillery and Missile Management Board of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, announced that the Fort 221 and Fort 223 224 carbines were adopted for arming the Ukrainian army, with an initial order of about 500 rifles. However, no further orders were publicly recorded, but we do know that police and internal security forces were issued the rifle as of 2016. From photos officially released between 2015 and the February invasion, we know that National Guard units, including special purpose units like the Scorpion Special Forces Detachment, responsible for protecting Ukraine's nuclear industry, and elements of the Special Operations Force, SSO, have also been issued the rifles. SSO units believed to have been issued the rifles include the 1st and 3rd Special Purpose Detachments based in Kyiv and the 8th Special Purpose Regiment based in Khmelnytskaya, as well as elements of the Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs. There's some confusion around the Fort 22 series designations. From Fort's website circa 2020, we can see that the majority of the IWI rifle range was on offer, but the Fort 222 and 223 are not listed here. But there are photographs of Fort 223 marked 5.56x45 by X95 pattern guns seen at trade shows, which suggests that for a time at least, the 223 designation was used. But, as we've seen from Fort's 2010 website, the Fort 223s were not listed as an available product. From the listing here, we can see that the Fort 221 covers both the 5.56x45 by and 545 by 39 with a 468 mm or 18.4 inch barrel, essentially a TAR-21. The Fort 224 is listed available in 5.56 and 5.45 with a 330 mm or 13 inch barrel, essentially the X95. And slightly confusingly, the X95 submachine gun configuration in 9 by 19 is also listed as the Fort 224. We can see that the Uzi Pro is listed as the Fort 226, while the 5.56x45 Galil Ace is listed as the Fort 227. The 7.62x39mm chambered version of the Ace is listed as the Fort 228, and the 7.62x51 version of the rifle is listed as the Fort 229. The Ukrainians designated the Galat's Accurized Galil as the Fort 301 and the Negev light machine gun as the Fort 401, both of which have been seen fleetingly in the field. The Tavor pattern rifles are not listed by Spets Techno Export, Ukraine's state export enterprise, but the IPI Vulcan is. Further survey of Fort's website shows that the Tavor series of rifles ceased to be listed on the page in March 2021, and IWI and Meprolite 
were removed from the site's partners section the following month, possibly suggesting the end of the IWI Fort partnership. Despite this, we've seen a considerable number of the Ukrainian Tavor variants in the field. Since the Russian invasion in February, the Fort 22 series have been frequently seen with internal security forces and the Ukrainian Army and National Guard Special Forces units. Within 24 hours of the Russian invasion, Russian forces shared videos that were said to be from a captured Ukrainian National Guard depot. The video shows more than a dozen Fort 221s piled on top of crates. Around the same time, several were seen equipping Ukrainian forces said to be linked to the Azov Brigade. On the 7th of March, former Ukrainian presidents Petro Poroshenko and Alexander Turchnikov were seen rallying territorial defence force units in Kyiv. Turchnikov was seen to be armed with a Fort 221. On the 9th of March, an unknown number were captured by Russian forces which seized the National Guard armory near the Zabrahizia power plant. At least one Fort 221 was shown by Russian state media. The Ukrainian Tavors continue to surface in imagery from the conflict, but it's difficult to tell where they're being used and by which units. Though, as mentioned earlier, they do seem to be used by Ministry of Internal Affairs special units, elements of the Ukrainian Army, SSO and National Guard. Both the Fort 221 rifle and the 224 carbine have been seen in the field, though it's often difficult to determine their chambering as the clearest indication, the shape of the magazine, is usually tucked under the user's arm. From the imagery available, we've seen quite a number of Fort 221s and 224s as personal weapons for SSO, National Guard and Ukrainian Army marksmen. They're most often seen equipped with Meprolite M5 and M21 sights, and a number of the weapons have been seen sporting camouflage paint jobs. This clip shows a Ukrainian soldier next to a knocked out vehicle. He's carrying a Fort 221 with a Meprolite M21 sight and a magnifier, and the rifle has had a rattle cam paint job. This photograph represents one of the few sightings of the Fort 224 carbine in the 9mm submachine gun configuration. If you look closely, you can just make out the RPC Fort logo on the butt of the carbine. This short video shows a Ukrainian serviceman with a Fort 224 carbine. And this photo shows a Ukrainian serviceman on a merry-go-round with a Fort 221 with a Meprolite M21 reflex optic. This footage of a Ukrainian ambush features a marksman armed with a UAR-10 designated marksman's rifle and a Fort 224 carbine as his personal weapon. Throughout the clip, the rifle can be seen hanging from a sling and then towards the end can be seen next to him on top of an armoured vehicle. This interesting photograph features three Fort 224s, probably all chambered in 5.45. Two of the rifles have had paint jobs, and all of them appear to be equipped with Meprolite M21s and magnifiers. My thanks to those who have helped collect images of the Ukrainian Tavors in the field, including Sad Sand and Dixie Mauser, and thank you also to Remigius Vilk, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. If you're enjoying our videos, please do support us via Patreon. We have lots of great perks to say thank you for your support. And of course, another great way to help us is to share the videos with friends. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.